Um, well, we are at the office of Balkan Youth Festival in uh, Stockholm, which you actually have been visited like uh, for um, five, six years ago with your movie. Yes. Uh, what was it? Heavy Chains? The Weight of Chains. Weight of chains uh, yes. I think it was number two. Number two, yes. Yeah. It was in Oslo and, uh, and uh, we screened also uh, one of them here. But I think even the uh, first part which we, uh, we screened it like uh, in the beginning, in the early beginning of our festival. So uh, with us we have um, Boris Malaguski, director, uh, producer, screenwriter sometimes if needed. Sometimes if needed. <laughs> uh, from uh, Balkan, from Serbia. Uh, who actually made his uh, fifth, sixth, seventh documentary? I haven't counted, but I think it's <laughs> it's almost getting close to ten. I think to ten, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, which few of them are very like popular, known um, worldwide, like uh, Weight of Chains one and two and three. Mm -hmm. I missed that one, and some uh, short documentary or documentary that you did uh, about Kosovo. Uh, or cultural, cultural heritage from Kosovo, then about Montenegro, and the last one is about Republika Srpska, yes. Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, so, uh, Boris, um, well, these three movies we didn't choose, actually the Kosovo had its own par uh, path to be screened around the world. Uh, Montenegro also had its own path to be screened <laughs> around the world like history about uh, Kosovo and Metohi and history about Montenegro. Uh, and third one about Republika Srpska is something which is also very, uh, how can I say, devoted to the struggle of the people of Serbian people who struggle uh, on this area in, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, we can say almost thousands of years or even more. <laughs> Uh, so I didn't choose it because it uh, it wake a lot of um, a lot of um, uh, how can I say um, discussions and a lot of uh, how can I say aggression somehow. I, I, I would say yeah, aggression towards the film before the film was even screened anywhere. Okay, yeah. because well, I think it's uh, it's because um, these various organizations uh, from Bosnia Herzegovina that live abroad that have their centers abroad were annoyed with the idea that a film would be made where Serbs were not presented in the worst possible way, mm -hmm. but where we talked about Serbia, Serbian history in a sort of positive sense to um, give examples of what we did that was good throughout history, which was the promotion of these values of fighting for freedom and fighting against the colonizers and occupiers of the past as a sort of pathway uh, to civilization uh, and showing that you know it's it's completely um, warranted for for humanity to fight for freedom in these very difficult times in the sense that they can be on their own and not have anybody uh, from outside dominate over them. Okay, uh, do you think that they like uh, because I'm living now in twenty or more years here in Sweden and I feel out that. Uh, uh, the history was like uh, taken from us, from us. Absolutely. I mean, not a lot of people know that Serbs have been living in Bosnia not just since you know the nineteen nineties and all of these <laughs> yes. conflicts that um, that were talked about a lot in the international media, but they've been living since forever. Basically, it's a, it's a long period of time where Serbs not only lived there but had. Uh, very active participation in the historical events that took place there. So they have their history, their culture, their tradition, and this is something that we try to emphasize using facts. I mean, even uh, some that have attacked the film uh, but have actually seen the film that say that, oh, this film is very one-sided because it talks about Serbs. Well, yes, it's a film about Serbs. I mean, if you made a film about Swedish history and somebody attacked it because the film didn't talk about Finland or Norway or Iceland or Denmark, I mean, it, it, it's not really an argument if, if, you, if you ask me because it, it, uh, it's a film about Swedish history. It, it's, if it talks about Swedes, then it's not one-sided. That's the topic of the film. Mm -hmm. But in this case, because a lot of groups have something against Serbs as a nation and as a, as a group that is trying to, in our case, promote something that Serbs gave to civilization that is good and try to say, well, this is this is something we should focus on to have more of that in the future as well. 
you know, they, they just want to talk about all the negative things that they were really negative in their attacks in their, on, on film. And, uh, and, and they have managed, unfortunately, to scare a lot of venues and cinemas, which saw the film and found nothing controversial about the film's content, but were scared because they thought, you know, because they wrote thousands of emails and made phone calls and then alerted, you know, media outlets and used their contacts in the media and political sphere. And a lot of venues were like, well, you know, we have very little to gain from screening this film, but we have a lot to lose, and you know, let's just uh, let's just not screen, and and, and it'll, it won't be our problem anymore. Which is a problem for society itself, because it it really uh, you know asks, begs the question: How much does freedom of speech cost? Mm -hmm. You know, if 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 you um, are willing to give up your freedom of speech and your freedom of expression and your <laughs> right to screen something that is not offensive to anybody because you know these groups uh, they have had nothing with the content specifically to say this is why we don't want the film screen mm -hmm. they just said we don't want the film screen mm -hmm. so if you blindly uh, participate in, in these cancellations and say well you know what we're just not going to offend anybody without even knowing what's offensive mm -hmm. that goes beyond cancel culture to me because cancel culture means that you know somebody said something or did something that was you know, uh, unacceptable to uh, various groups or the majority of society, and you say, well, this is not acceptable. But in this case, you can't really say what it is that's not acceptable. Mm. These groups attack the film without even watching it. And I would love to go into a discussion with the various Bosniak groups with, which attack the film and, uh, and address their concerns regarding the film's content. But this wasn't about the film's content at all. They didn't say, well, in this line you said this. In this line, you said that. No, they just made claims that the film is doing all these things, which it isn't doing. Mm -hmm. It's just fabrication. It's, it's like I asked some journalists and said, can you imagine that you, um, you, know, you write an article and it's supposed to go out tomorrow in mm -hmm. tomorrow's newspaper. And then a lot of groups, without even reading your article that's going mm -hmm. out tomorrow, they decide to ban you and they get the newspaper to ban your article without even reading it. Mm -hmm. I mean, would you say that this is correct and this is fair no you would say well let's publish the article first and yeah. then let's see the article and then if there's something wrong with the article the, the groups that are against it they have every right to publish their own article as a sort of response to the one they they, they just read but they have to read it first and this is what um, uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to emphasize that it's not you know it's not a, a group of people who are distressed with the film it's a group of people that are that are part yeah. of an agenda yeah it's an agenda. And that's why you are part, actually, of this conversation, since, uh, as you know, we are Balkan Film Festival that has screened in here movies for the last 20, 20, 12, 13 years. And we really uh, uh, managed to deal with all filmmaking, all kind of filmmaking from the Balkans, showing that Balkan is not just a war, <laughs> especially not crime in this war. It's about the history of the people who live there, who share, their history, tradition, culture, language, everything. And uh, the same pattern that I find out now when I saw your movie, how you actually alone struggle, alone struggle to come out with your movie. I felt myself, okay, I felt the same when uh, Peter Handke, 2018, get the uh, Nobel Prize. And suddenly you, uh, you see the same uh, how can I say patterns? The same, same, same way tools that are dealing with aggression and like uh, talking about genocide, about what? He's a writer. He's a writer from the national, national, international perspective. Even he didn't take one state to be toward against one or another, but he support the right. He support the truth, and he's by him, his words said that. And I felt that we didn't know from which part we actually get this uh, response, which is... From which direction the yeah, wind was blowing. Yeah, yeah. From, uh, is it media? Is it Sweden? Is it state? It is. But since uh, Academy is Swedish one, I find out poor Academy, they must struggle with something we, even we didn't understand. So I was watching your struggle now from a side to understand that some patterns, some agenda is working 
uh, dealing with something that you are not supposed, you are not allowed to come out with some kind of truth, which is common truth about history of the Balkans, which is not Sarajevo only. You show the part where uh, 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 Sarajevo had a disaster there, but you show even the people who are taking their graves and leaving that. We cannot see it. You know? Absolutely. You know, I, I've had two Swiss journalists who came out of, uh, to the St. Gallen premiere of the film in Switzerland, and they saw the film and they said, one of their comments was, you know, we saw the, the tragedy that the Serbs went through in the film, but you didn't talk that much about the tragedy that the Bosniaks went through. And said, well, we talked about their tragedy as well. We talked about, um, you know, Srebrenica, and uh, one of the accusations was that we're denying genocide in Srebrenica, which we're not doing at all. There was no uh, denial of any crime whatsoever that took place. We actually condemned the crimes. We, we went to Srebrenica, we filmed there. We said that this was the uh, largest single act of mass killing throughout the Yugoslav Wars, the, the, the worst in Europe since World War II. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a line from the film where you have these groups saying that we're you know, justifying the crimes. No, we actually said in a line in the film, there's no justification for what happened here. Mm -hmm. And then they say, well, you're trying to minimize it. If we say something is the worst and the largest, yeah. how is that minimizing? That's the opposite <laughs> of minimizing. That's maximizing. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, uh, uh, and then these journalists said, well, why didn't you talk more about the Bosnian? I said, you, you've really heard a lot about these stories about what happened to the Bosnians, so rightfully so. You know, we should talk about the pain that the Bosniaks went through during the war. There is no dispute. But um, uh, I asked them, have you ever heard about the pain that the Serbs went through during the war? And I said, well, I've been there, I know, but I, okay, okay, you, but when was the last time in Swiss media, for example, Somebody. that, that you, you've or heard about, heard, mm -hmm. heard a Serb woman, her, Serb woman's cries in Bosnia and Herzegovina? When was the last time you heard about that? In the centuries. And, and she said, I have to admit, you know, I've never seen yeah. it in the media. Uh, the same uh, thing, uh, actually I did a movie, uh, Stroke Kigarino, which is Iron Warriors, which is first world war uh, story about women, that, that the struggle. And suddenly again, uh, the, uh, the, the, the speech about history, which is Ottomans, which is objective, <laughs> how can I say, true, suddenly you should not even mention that. It is something which is very uh, frustrating actually if you're living here and if you are actually must speak about some truth. Truth is not whole if you don't put all parts of the but, truth but, inside. But, but as we talked about the agenda, I think the agenda has to do with controlling the narrative. Yeah. Because they want the narrative to be that one side is uh, bad, uh, bad yeah. and horrible one is and one right. is angelic and, and, and does no wrong. And I think this is not in line with historical facts. I mean, even mm -hmm. these Swiss journalists that talked to the film, talked to me about the film, they even said that the historical facts that Malagursky presents in his film are accurate. And this is something that has been confirmed by our newspaper, Tagesan Zeiger, in <laughs> Switzerland. So, you know, the historical facts are accurate. So what's the problem? Why can't we, you know, we had one viewer, one Swedish viewer who came to the Stockholm premiere of this film, Serbska, the struggle for freedom, who said that the film only presents facts and presents the truth. So if it's facts, if it's truth, if you can hear w a very one-sided uh, uh, narratives on, on the Balkans wars and everything, why can't you at least try to hear one that's objective? Because we and we don't talk about the war that much in, uh, in the movie. No. This is very we important to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do talk about it, but we try to talk about it objectively. It's history. And like say that, you know, history. all sides suffered. Uh, we went to Srebrenica and said that the, the site of the mass suffering of, of Bosniaks uh, at the hands of the, of the Serb army forces. So we don't hide this. We don't negate this. This is something that is absolutely... Uh, are hurtful to us as well as humanists, mm -hmm. as people who believe that no human being should suffer, regardless whether he's Serb, he or she is Serb, uh, Bosnian, Croat, or whatever uh, other ethnicity. So, you know, uh, we do this in an objective way, but we focus on what's really beautiful about Serbia's history and tradition and culture that goes back, way back before the 1990s, and we try to focus on that and say this is, this is what we should focus on and yet we have all these groups saying, no, you can't talk about that. You, ha you can only talk about Serbinitsa. Oh. And this is the only topic that you can talk about. And this is something that frustrates you know, a lot of people, not just Serbs, but people throughout the world. Because if you talk about just war crimes and all these horrible things and that you should talk about, but if that's the only thing you talk about, 
You know, what kind of message are you sending to the world? Is the only thing that we as Balkan nations are capable of is, of is waging war? No, no, no. This is not who we are. This is not who we are. Our true face is all the beautiful things that we've done throughout history in literature, from Ivo Andrich to, you know, Mikhailo Pupin and all these amazing, you know, Mesha Selimovic, all these amazing people who have given so much to civilization, not just people, but, but architecture, monasteries. This is the, you know, stuff that we done, did in previous movies as well. This is what we want to present in the world. And, and you know, it, it was very strange that the mayor of Sarajevo, um, uh, Benjamin Akaric attacked this film and said this is film that, that's aimed against them. It's not against them. We actually promoted Sport. Sarajevo in the best possible. There's no tourist documentary that presents Sarajevo more, more beautifully than our film yeah. does. So instead of saying, look, you know, maybe we can disagree in politics, maybe we can disagree on these things, but, but you know, let's try to present ourselves in the world because we talk about Bosniaks in the film. In the best possible way, we yeah. say that they're, they're a nation with a tradition of hospitality, who love a good joke, and, and we really try and to... Food. <laughs> and food, absolutely, and music. we present their food as well, and music, and, and we do that, and we talk about Serbs, Croats, and Bosniaks, all, uh, you know, participating in creating the cultural uniqueness of Bosnia and Herzegovina. This is a line from the film. Instead of them saying, look, this is good that, you know, these things are being presented to the world. They say, no, we can't talk about this because the only thing we're allowed to talk about is exactly. war crimes and yeah. Srebrenica. And it, it, it's bad for them as well. I think these groups that are you know, uh, promoting the, 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 this aggression, this negativity towards the film, they're actually doing something really bad for the Bosnia community as, as, as well. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you feel, because everybody's talking about this history revision, uh, do you have something about that to say? I don't think our, our, our film is, is um, uh, being revisionist towards history at all. I think, uh, I think we're presenting facts. I think those uh, who are inventing facts and uh, creating false narratives are the ones who, who are re re revising history and trying to present it in, in a way you know, that suits their own political interests. And this is something that's being done in in, you know, in, in various countries around the world, you have a lot of political groups that try to, you know, manipulate with history to sort of uh, strengthen their political oh, arguments. Yeah. But, but I think this is, uh, you know, the wrong way to go about it. Only facts, historical facts, should be above politics. And this is where we, you know, where we really don't make any compromises. Facts need to be presented in, a, in an accurate way. And uh, if that's so, people can judge the film from which viewpoint we... Of course, one can always say, well, why didn't you say this in the film? Why didn't you say that in the film? You know, if you look at uh, artistic f fiction uh, works such as Quo Vadi Saida, which I watched, it's a, it's a feature film um, uh, that presents a very one-sided Bosnia viewpoint of what happened uh, uh, during the bo uh, wars in, in, um, in Bosnia-Herzegovina during the war. Um, you know, if they had one sentence where they said, you know, the Serbs suffered in their area as well, I would say, well, at least they're trying to be objective. Yeah. At least they're trying. But they weren't. But it's still, even though it's a one-sided approach, I have nothing against that film being screened. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's a one-sided viewpoint. We didn't want to be one-sided. We talked about the suffering of others as well. So they don't want objective approaches, but, but they're completely in favor of their one-sided approaches. I don't want, I would never, I would never want, to, I, I would say my films are not pro-Serbian, they're pro-truth. Mm -hmm. And I would never want to be a part of a film that is pro-Serbian or pro-Bosniak or pro-Croat. I want the truth to be first and I want to tell the stories that are untold. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the Serbian side uh, of, of the suffering that went, that not just in the 1990s, but way back in World War II, where you know you had concentration camps where Serbs were the main victims that, that, that took place, you know you had World War One where we lost essentially a third of our population, you know in, in the in the struggle for freedom against the occupiers and uh, you know the Austro-Hungarian occupations and the Ottoman occupations of the past. We have so many examples of where we really sacrificed everything we could to have that freedom, and nobody ever gets to talk about those things. So it's not you know, and, and we make a film that talks about those things, but also recognizes the suffering of others, and it's not a lot. Mm -hmm. I can't accept that. Okay, I know that you have a quite hard journey. Journey. You last your trip were like in Europe, as I remember, different countries. Which were that? 
Well, we screened the film in Switzerland, in uh, Germany, Belgium, Holland, and Luxembourg. In one. In Bosnia and Herzegovina, where we started the, the, the <laughs> premiere. The premiere, yeah. <laughs> And now you're in Sweden, you're yes. preparing next, uh, next journey, Serbia, Serbia, yeah. Serbia, and then I, I can imagine that you're planning to Throughout visit, Europe uh, and North America and Australia. Uh, yeah, yeah, whatever you got uh, some invitation. And I think yeah. also festivals could be interesting for you. Absolutely, we already uh, were selected for a couple of um, smaller festivals in, in France, in Israel and India, actually. Mm. Do you have any idea about how to stop this agenda? To continue fighting. And uh, it's not going to be easy because whenever we announce a premiere in the city, they start organizing their emails, and it's you know they they're making threats that on the night of the premiere don't materialize because mm -hmm. their their agenda isn't to cause mayhem. Their agenda is to scare people that they're mm -hmm. going to cause mayhem. But whichever city, whichever venue, whichever cinema in the end decides to actually screen the film, nothing bad happened. I mean, we had screenings here in um, in Stockholm where. It was completely calm and quiet, yeah. you know, no protests, no anything. So, you know, it's, it's a scare tactic mm -hmm. and we're, we're going to fight it and we're just trying to convince people that this is like online activism. Mm -hmm. I mean, even, even if they organize a protest, which they haven't done regarding this film, even if they organize a protest, you know, um, it, 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 it's, it, it has to be peaceful. Otherwise, you know, what, what message are they sending? So, yeah, but you know, uh, they open a when we are if we if you try to enter some uh, swedish institution i can imagine that they will uh, act them well absolutely but i mean uh, at some point you know the institutions have to ask their, themselves a simple question um are you going to be ho held hostage to very narrow ethnic interests <laughs> and agendas uh, or are you or going to be free in your own country mm -hmm. to do whatever you you think is is fair? I mean, it's uh, it, it is uh, you know discouraging to an extent that cinemas that have seen the film said to us it would have been easier if they said you know the film is horrible and you yeah, know, there's yeah, so many problematic things yeah. you know yeah, th that would have been kind of you know fair because but but they tell us you know there's nothing wrong with the film we just you know don't want any trouble and that's why I ask the question how much does freedom of speech cost because. You know, if we're not willing to fight for freedom of speech, that's the moment we lose it. Mm. I mean, it, it's it's something that goes beyond like how much is this going to cost or anything. It's it's really something that we can't live without because then we're not free anymore. So I would hope that you know, uh, Swedish institutions would uh, you know consider all this and say, well, okay, first let's watch the film. If they see the film, if they see anything wrong with the film, let, let me know what's wrong with the film. Let's talk about it. But if they say that there's nothing wrong with the film, then why is it a problem to screen it? If, if, if there's no problem, if the film is completely fine, then screen the film. If, if not, then admit at least that you are not free. Because if you are scared in your own home to show something that you think is completely legitimate and fine, that's, that's worrying for all Swedes, all Swedes, all citizens of Sweden. Actually. And they should, they should really stand up and say, look, you know, Every community has a right to their own. This is, I think, you know, a lot of communities in Sweden get, you know, funding and support from the Swedish state to promote their culture. Mm. So if you say that one community isn't allowed to do this, why? Mm. Why isn't it allowed to talk about, you know, uh, 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 one nation's history with, without attacking anybody? And, and you know, uh, why, why is that an issue? So, you know, it, it is an uphill battle, absolutely, mm. but we're not going to give up because... We've done nothing wrong. If, if, as I said, if somebody from all these cinemas and venues told us, look, this is what's wrong in the film, time code, from here to here, what you say, quote, this is problematic. Nobody has said this to us. And they said the opposite. It's all good. And something which is also, uh, so can I say, message of your film, which is like a freedom, <laughs> everything from freedom and freedom for nothing. Actually, it's something which is very, uh, how can I say, uh, describe the Serbs during the history and uh, actually uh, it is also a lesson to the rest of the world since uh, you know our epic songs are some kind of uh, 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 real uh, what for that? Uh, um, uh, uh, confirmation. Confirmation, yes. It's like confirmation of the history narration which is which is actually that they're struggling for your own freedom, call it freedom, but for your own identity, for your own uh, 
culture, language, history, and things like that. It is not something that you could just forget and, and, and get uh, you know money or some other prosperity. Absolutely, you know, and it, I agree with you that this film really has a message to not just you know Serbs and, and uh, people from the Balkans, but to really people throughout the world because you know we are you know go, going for through very, very troubling times and uh, the concept of freedom uh, is is very much lost with a lot of people and the idea that you have to give up a lot of your freedoms to be safe as Mark Twain used to say that you know those who give up um, freedoms for for safety deserve neither oh. and uh, you know it's 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 a very strong message that you know we we mustn't ever give up on on, the, on our freedoms and, and our rights to exist to um, express you know our ourselves and in whatever way we see fit as long as it's not you know threatening your others and this is what freedom really means freedom does have limits and uh, everything that we've done so far uh, in regards to this film we have been completely within the limits of freedom and um, not attacking offending or doing anything to you know uh, uh, endanger anybody we we've completely only presented you know facts historical facts and the message of the film is that everyone must be free and thus equal uh, which is something that is very embedded in the in the Serbian national psyche mm -hmm. and it's not you know it's we're not trying to say that <laughs> Serbs are these uh, um, the special uh, people the, the, of the planet you know, special people <laughs> of the planet it's just using uh, you know a sort of a case study of a nation that really has gone through a lot of difficult times throughout its history that people don't know about. They don't really know, you know how many nations can you list that have lost in a, in a world war a third of their population. Mm. So, you know, the Serbs uh, in World War I have lost more people per capita than any other nation in the world. Yeah. And, you know, and there's a reason for that. And, and uh, you know, what is this reason? And then we analyze that in the film. And we look at World War Two, where you know we almost all, the same, uh, almost the same, you know. And you've you've had these mass concentration camps uh, for mainly Serbs, but also Jews, Roma, and others. And, and uh, you know nobody really knows about these things. How many people have heard about Yasenovac? And you know there have been a couple of films that started talking more about this issue, like Gada of Yasenovac. And I think it's a good start to to try to open up the the discussion. But you know. A lot of people just simply don't know about these things. Mm -hmm. So our goal is to, you know, sort of give an example about this nation that people know very little about. We maybe know about the negative things that happened in the 1990s, and I see no issue with that. You yeah. know, let's talk about the negative stuff as well. But I think there's so much more of this positive stuff that should be focused on. And as I said, if you focus on the positive stuff, people will think, well, you know, let 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 us look at those things as our examples for the future. Let us yeah. not look at the negative things, let us learn from them, but let's have the positive things to, to, to create a blueprint for not just for Serbia's future, future but for the children the world. actually. Absolutely. For coming after. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, as I find out in your previous work, like a uh, story about Kosovo, you are also following part of the Serbian people there? Well, we, in, the, in Kosovo, A Moment of Civilization, which people can watch on YouTube if they like, we talk about Serbia's uh, historical heritage in Kosovo, and we actually say that this is not something that belongs just to Serbs. This is something that Serbs made for all of civilization. And we try to say that you know uh, a lot of people have seen those horrible images of ISIS uh, uh, militants destroying cultural heritage in Syria, in mm -hmm. Iraq, and you know the people were horrified to see these people you know go with sledgehammers in, in museums and destroy mm -hmm. these things. People know about this, but we went through this in Kosovo, and we're still going through very troubling times there, where our heritage is very endangered. They're on UNESCO's list of uh, cultural heritage in danger. Mm -hmm. um, so we wanted to see what, why are they in danger, and would it be justified for Kosovo as a self-proclaimed state to enter UNESCO uh, after everything that, that they've contributed yeah. to mm -hmm. destroying this her cultural heritage? Uh, with you know 150 churches and monasteries being destroyed or desecrated that those are numbers that are unheard of and um, you know uh, simply simply put we tried to analyze the four major examples of this cultural heritage with the four sites that are under UNESCO's list and um, you know our, our message really was that the world should care this mm -hmm. isn't just something to do with service this is to do with all of humanity because these are 
uh, you know, these are um, 14th century monasteries in some cases that are uh, important for all mankind. <laughs> shall we? Shall we manage? Shall we mention now, uh, like Ukraine? Since somehow I can make the almost parallels when you made the movie about Montenegro and struggle for people in a peaceful way to come out with the effort through. Uh, and now we are in one more, which is like more world, not worldwide, but anyhow, world is open and, and uh, put their eyes, our eyes there. Do you have some parallels there? Well, I think there are a lot of parallels between what's happening in Ukraine and, and what happened in the Balkans in the 1990s. I, I like to say that the 1990s were sort of a training ground for what was to happen in many, many sub subsequent wars throughout the world. And uh, it is really tragic that people have not learned much, unfortunately, from, mm -hmm. from all these, uh, not just you know, the Balkans, but from uh, many other wars in, in many other parts of the world, whether they're Middle East or Northern Africa or, or Central Asia. And um, it is troubling that we're going through like, these uh, various cycles of, uh, of suffering uh, when, when I think the main cause is that people don't really know that much about what's really going on. And it's, Everything is always presented in a very simplistic way. This is why we need these documentaries and these artistic projects to try to shed light on lesser known facts that could help understand. Um, Which is not accessible through the media, actually. Not accessible. And, and as, as I said, you know, it's about dialogue, it's about discussing things and understanding those that maybe we don't understand that much and trying to find a solution that is peaceful one. Mm -hmm. I am somebody who always believes that a peaceful solution is the best solution. But to get a peaceful solution, we need dialogue, we need understanding, and we need a little bit of goodwill. Are you alone? I think a lot of people think this way. I think, uh, <laughs> I think the majority actually thinks this way. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it's hard to, to get our, you know, peace-loving voices be heard because the aggressive ones are unfortunately usually the louder ones. And yeah, said, oh, as you said, we have a Balkan Youth Festival uh, uh, sign behind us and we actually opened this festival just to provide the stories which are different than the media is serving and uh, or presenting and also some kind of, when, as soon as you open the film uh, uh, subject in, uh, in conversation from Balkan, then you get the uh, Sarajevo Film Festival as a starting point and ending point. Uh, actually, my idea was to open, even if they called them regional, they had actually an agenda, which was one agenda, which was made during this war, 1996, and Bibi Andersson, very famous uh, Swedish actors, get all support from the Swedish actors uh, to support this part, actually knowing or not knowing what's going on. Um, so uh, I find out for myself that it is my duty to come out with the whole history. I mean, whole the truth. Uh, do you think that you have one duty to do what are you doing? <laughs> I think I think you and I both have this mission that we're on to try to um, talk about the lesser known topics and present it through facts. I think this is very important not just for you and me as, as individuals but uh, but for all societies and this is why you know I really support what you're doing with the Balkan Youth Film Festival and I think that uh, it's a very important contribution to this discussion because uh, I always say that people shouldn't watch my film and say, well, this is it. This is the entire story. Yeah, yeah, I have absolutely. nothing else to watch regarding that topic. That's why we have it as a Balkan. I mean, absolutely. different stories. Sounds. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's like when people ask me, which media outlet should I read? I said, all of them. Mm -hmm. You know, try to read as many sources as you... As, 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 and if all the media are saying, you know, the exact same, 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 same. at least try to find try one to that's find. saying something different, you know. And, and then try to think for yourself, because unfortunately, in today's day and age, we all have to be a little bit of an investigative journalist and to try to figure out what's really going on, because everybody seems to have their own agenda. But if you're, you know, reading different sources and li look, watching uh, different films and that discuss these topics, you know, then you're going to be closer to the truth. I think that's the, maybe we'll never know the final truth about everything, but at least we can yearn to be as close to the truth as possible. Yeah, and the movies which we are actually dealing with, and it's fiction, you know, if we say agenda back, uh, behind the movie, then we have a problem with the movie, actually. Absolutely. Because it's still art, and we are fighting for the good art. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you. Boris, I think that we can like um, help you to, to promote these movies, 
which are coming. Is it some su subject which is now burning inside of you? I can't say anything. <laughs> I think I can imagine that there's a lot of subjects that are burning. <laughs> okay, thank you once again, and I hope that the next time we will make uh, one screening, uh, at least one, but I hope more, uh, into some kind of institutional or, or organizational uh, screen which is very Swedish, that people in Sweden uh, learn to know something more about uh, actually what's going on in the 90s. Not only the 90s, even history before, which is mm, probably more important uh, to understand the situation now. And thank you I for hope so too. Thank you. Thank you for <laughs> this interview. Thank you. Thank you.